All right, so let's see this example here. I have a 10 kilogram block on top of an inclined plane. So 10, the plane has a length of five meters and it makes an angle of 37 degrees with the horizontal. The angles of where it should be, awesome. Um, I want a free body diagram, so let's do that real quick. Uh, free body diagram, you can't, you're supposed to draw the object as a dot and you can't draw the incline or anything like that. But what you should do is make draw your little axis there for the x-axis and this is going to help you um, get all the forces in here. I recommend you draw a sketch with the plane and then the, in, the free body diagram next to it so you can kind of match and see that you're getting it right. Um, so this is the positive x-axis because you're going to be moving um, this way. Okay, You're going down here with an mg. This gets decomposed into mgx along the plane, mg or down the plane, and mgy into the plane. Normal is out of the plane like that, um, right there. This is a complete free body diagram. Uh, you might also wanna, you should probably write a, your y-axis here as well. The positive y-axis will always match with normal. Um, now we wanna find all the forces, calculate all the forces. So I'm going to use gravity. I'm gonna say gravity is approximately 10. Um, so we're gonna use that number instead to make life a little bit easier. Mass is 10, so 10 times 10 is 100. MGX, remember MGX is MG sine or cosine, sine of theta, right? And MGY is obviously cosine of theta. This is backwards from what you usually do. So this is 100 sine of 37 and 100 cosine of 37. So this gives me a 60 and an 80. So this is a 60 and this is 80. Okay, I got three forces already. Um, I'm missing the last force, which is normal. If you look here, normal simply cancels with the y-axis. So normal will be 80 as well. Okay, there are no forces canceling you in the x-axis. So you're definitely going to move down this way. I can draw a little acceleration vector showing that I'm gonna accelerate down. That, that arrow just can't touch the dot, right? So that's it, that's part A, I got everything. Now I wanna write an expression, derive an expression for the acceleration of the block. Remember, when we say acceleration of the block, we mean the acceleration in the x-axis. So A is really AX, and that's what I want, because we know that AY equals zero for the inclined plane, all right? How do I find acceleration? This is a force problem, MG, MGX, normal, and I want acceleration, so I'm gonna do F equals MA. Sum of all forces equals MA. Again, here, you don't necessarily have to show this, um, but if you want to be very precise, you can put the little x's everywhere because that's the only thing we care about here is the x-axis. It's only moving in the x-axis. What other forces in the x-axis? The only force is mgx. So I have mgx positive equals max. I'm just going to write ma because we know that's the only a we have. And now I just have to solve for a. One thing that uh, a lot of people want to do when they get here is cross these two m's, but you can't do that just yet. Because if you do that, you're left with gx, and what is gx, right? Um, there is no such a thing as gx, um, unless you can. You want to think of gx as g sine of theta. Um, I guess you could, but what I recommend you do to, to avoid confusion is don't touch mgx, don't cancel anything, until you've replaced mgx for what it stands for. mgx is a placeholder, it's a shortcut for mg sine of theta, so we don't have to write as many things. So let's, let's expand this into what it is, mg sine of theta equals ma. And now we can cancel and we're done. A is g sine of theta right there. And this is a little equation that's probably worth remembering um, for your test. Every time you have an, inclined, uh, an object going down an inclined plane that has no friction, the acceleration will be g sine of theta, okay? Um, if you're going down the plane, it's positive g sine of theta. If you're going up the plane, then uh, gravity is pulling you back down, so it's going to be a negative. Okay? So let's calculate that. Um, g sine of theta is going to be 6 meters per second squared. Okay? Part C says find the speed of the, uh, at the, uh, uh, find the block speed at the bottom. So this is the final velocity. What do I know here? It's released. Um, this is kind of implying that it's from rest. It doesn't give me any initial velocity, so I'm going to go with that. And I want to know the velocity at the bottom. So this is a motion problem. 
and I have to have my variables here. Let's see. V initial, V final, A, delta X, and delta T. The initial velocity is zero. The final velocity is what I'm looking for. The acceleration I just found, it's six. Um, it's positive six. Do I have delta X? I do. Delta X is this length here, right? So you're going from here to here. This is motion in a straight line. Even though it's down a plane, that's my X axis. The same thing if I move this way, I'm just tilting everything this way. Okay, so this delta x is the same thing as in this case L, which is just 5. T is the variable that I don't have, but it's okay that I don't have T because I already know three things. One, two, three. So I can do this using the second equation to find the final velocity. So the final velocity would be the square root of 2. A is 6. Delta x is 5 and the final velocity will be 7.75 meters per second. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully that makes sense. You absolutely have to know how to do this. This is just the beginning of how problems in, in inclined planes work. I have a practice problem here that I would like you to try. Um, and just to be clear here, the idea is that the block is moving with 20 and now it's going to go up the plane, okay? So let's try that. I want to know how far up the plane it goes. All right, let's give that a shot. 